Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd ayula habbati fillah. Continuing on in our tars. <coughs> our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Babahari rahimahullahu ta'ala. We were discussing the 15th point. The Quran is the kalam. Al-Quran kalam Allah. The Quran is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walau kariya al-kafirun, walau kariya al-ahl al-zandaka, walau kariya al-mushrikun, walau ghayrihim min ahl al-bida'a wa zandaka. Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala said, Wal Quran kalam Allah wa tanzeeluhu wa nooruhu laysa bi makhluk. La'anna Qur'ana min Allah wa ma kana min Allah fa laysa bi makhluk. Wa hakada qala Malik bin Anas wa Ahmed bin Hanbal wa fuqaha qabla hawa. Qablahuma wa ba'dahuma wal mira'u fihi kufa. Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, um, he said that the Qur'an uh, is a speech of Allah, his revelation and light. It is not created since the Qur'an is from Allah. And that which is from Allah is not created. This was what Malik bin Anas said, Imam Malik, uh, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, and the scholars before and after them said, and debating about it is kufr, rahimahum Allah, ala ulama al-Muslimin. May Allah have mercy upon the scholars of Islam. And we mentioned that this is the 15th uh, point in the treaties, and we had already explained some of it and gave some of the delil from the Qur'an, some of the evidences from the Qur'an. And relevant to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some of the evidences from the sunnah regarding the Qur'an being the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of his sifat that is not created, tabarak wa ta'ala, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the sifa or the attribute of kalam of speech an ibn umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala awla ma khalaq allah ta'ala al qalam fa akhadhuhu bi yaminihi bi yaminihi wa kilta yadayhi yamin qala fa kataba ad dunya wa ma yakun fiha min amalin ma'mulin al bir aw fajr aw fujur Rutbun o yabasin fa ahsahu indahu fi dhikr The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said in the hadith of Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the hadith narrated in akhrajuhu al-ajuri bi sanad al-sahih that the Prophet ﷺ said, the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the all the Allah, Allah the Almighty created was the pen. And <coughs> he uh, took it with his right hand and both of his hands uh, are right. And then he wrote, he said, write the dunya and what is contained in it from deeds from that from the wicked and from the righteous from that which is dry and from that which is uh, moist and the scholars like Imam Ahmed and Abbas Nurasi رحمهم الله وهو من أئمة المسلمين بهذا الحديث على أن القرآن كلام الله غير مخلوق. So they use they use this as evidence to show that the Quran is the speech of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and it is not created. And Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى said هذا الشيخ دلنا على شيء لم نفتن له قوله إن الأول ما خلق الله من شيء خلق القلم والكلام قبل قلم 
So Imam Ahmed said that the, the evidence, he said this great Imam showed us something that we didn't uh, explore or come upon before in analyzing this hadith and that the what what it is is that the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the pen and his speech was before the pen letting us know that the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the pen and he told it to write. He told the pen uh, to write. Showing us that speech, the characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, came before the pen. And the pen was the first creation. Showing us that speech came before the pen. And that speech is uncreated because the first created thing was the qalam, was the pen which was told to write by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the wajid dalala. That's how the scholars understood and used this as evidence to support that the Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's uncreated. Ruya Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari an Hakam ibn Muhammad عن سفيان بن عيينة قال أدركت مشايخنا منذ سبعين سنة منهم عامر بن دينار يقولون القرآن كلام الله ليس بمخلوق وقد أدرك عامر بن دينار ابن أباس وجابر وغيرهم من الصحابة رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين This is a beautiful narration of Imam Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala and he said or this is a, a, a this was a, collected in Bayhaqi in his book uh, a Sifat Bisan uh, Sahih that Muhammad Ibn Ismail al-Bukhari narrated this on Hakim Ibn Muhammad who narrated on Sufyan Ibn Ayyina who said, I met our scholars over 70 years, and from them was Amr ibn Dinar. And they all said, the Quran is the speech of Allah and it is not created. And he met Amr ibn Dinar, or uh, uh, Amr ibn Dinar met ibn Abbas, and other them from the Sahaba. Letting us know, look at this silsila that Ahl Sunnah has when it comes to understanding their creed and their minhaj. That they have those people from the Salaf all the way up to the Ru'usa Salaf, which is the Sahaba, that there's a chain of narration that we have of protecting the correct creed in Minhaj, the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Minhaj of Allah, the Almighty, and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen. Wusu'ila Jafar ibn Muhammad bin Hussein an al-Qur'an faqal laysa bi khaliq wa la makhluk wa lakinnuhu kalam Allah ta'ala. Look how the Salaf were they didn't have arguments and say, well, the Mus'haf is this, it's not the Qur'an, it's this, it's written here, that, and they, they didn't even, they closed those doors. Here's what ja, uh, uh, Jafar ibn Muhammad bin Hussein said about the Qur'an. He said that it is not, that it is not uh, created, nor did it create. However, it is the speech of Allah the Almighty. They, they, they suffice with that. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, Al-Quran kalam Allah azza wa jal, ghayr makhluk, faman qala makhluk fuhu wa kafir. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said, The Quran is the speech of Allah, the Almighty. The Most High and Honorable. 
and it is not created. So whoever says that it was created, then he is a disbeliever. So what Imam Shafi'i said. Those great Imams like Imam Ahmed, Imam Shafi'i, with Imam uh, uh, Malik, with Imam Abu Hanifa before them, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. وَقَالَ أَبُوْ عُبَيْدْ قَاسِمِ بِنْ سَلَّامِ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى الْحَنَفِي That's a great... Uh, uh, Ibn Salam, رَحِمَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى مَنْ قَالَ الْقُرْآنِ مَخْلُوكِ فَكَرْ إِفْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى وَقَالَ عَلَى اللَّهِ عِزَّ وَجَلْ مَا لَمْ يَقُولْ هُوَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا نِصَارَى Imam Ubaid uh, Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam Rahimullah Ta'ala said Whoever says about the Quran that it's created Has lied upon Allah The Almighty, the Most High And he is said That which uh, spoken about Allah, the Almighty Or the Most Honorable, the Most Majestic Subhana What even the Jews and the Christians don't say about him Look at how the Salaf were. They didn't entertain. They closed the door. Halas, the Quran is not created. It's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that. Yakfina. And it's, it's one, it, it, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine sifat. That Allah speaks in a manner that suits His majesty whenever and however He subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Qala ibn, qala, uh, uh, قال ابن عز الحنفي قال ابن عز الحنفي رحمه الله تعالى قال This is a great Hanafi scholar who explained عقيدة التهوية among many other great uh, books القرآن كلام الله منه بلا كيفية قولا وأنزله على رسوله وحيا وصدقه المسلمون على ذلك حقا وَأَيْقِنُوا أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِالْحَقِيقَةِ لَيْسِ بِمَخْلُوكِ كَكَلَامَ الْبَرِيَةِ فَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى لَمْ يَزَلْ مُتَكَلَّمٍ إِذَا شَاهُ وَمَتَ شَاهُ وَكَيْفَ شَاهُ يكفينا هذا Look at the salaf of this ummah Imam, uh, Imam Ibn, Ab, uh, Ibn Az Al-Hanafi He said رحمه الله تعالى He said the Quran is the speech of Allah Without, without asking uh, how, it is his saying, subhanAllah. And it was revealed to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as revelation. And the Muslims believe in that as the truth. And they are certain that it is the speech of Allah the Almighty in reality, and it is not created like the speech of Allah's creatures, of, of people. That's the aqeed of Ahl Sunnah. However, those groups who deviated, like, for example, the Mu'tazila, مَا ذَهَبَ إِلَيَّ الْمُعْتَزِلَ وَهُوَ أَنَّهُ مَخْلُوقُ The Mu'tazila, they said that the Qur'an was, the, uh, was created. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Qur'an uh, as uh, something separate from him, from himself. And they only make idhafatuhu ilayhi li tashrif. They only associate the kalam of Allah and the Qur'an as the, with Allah, out of honor. And some of the examples to, to further explain this because it's, it's clear in Arabic, but in English it takes a bit more, uh, you know, it's a little bit stranger of a concept for us to grasp these arguments uh, of the Salaf and to articulate these arguments. So, uh, pertinent to this, that the Quran being the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Mu'tazila, they say that it is associated with Allah 
out of honor. Meaning, for example, in the Arabic language, when, or, or, when you say Beit Allah, the house of Allah. You don't mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives in that house, but that is idhafatan li tashrif, out of honor for that masjid, those places of worship in which people gather together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call it the beaut, beautillah. Or if you say kaabatillah, the kaaba, which is uh, the Allah's kaaba. That is associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't mean it's a part of Allah. But it means that it is associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns that. That is His. So they, they call this idhafatan li tashrif, out of honor for those objects. It's, it's, Allah has given those things honor. Nabi Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idhafa li tashrif, that he was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all those messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. And then you have those other groups. So this is uh, the goal of the Asha'ira. They say that the Quran, it is created and that it is separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they associate it as the book of Allah or as the speech of Allah out of tashrif, not as his actual divine speech and one of his sifat. They say it's separate rather. Then you have the Maturidiyya, you have the Asha'ira. But we're going to more focus, we'll just briefly, as simple, <coughs> as simple as we can, articulate what those people who exist, uh, who exist in this day and age, whose argument uh, they still uh, are still uh, believed by many Muslims, is the Aqidah of the Sha'ira. And basically they say that the Qur'an, you know, they affirm some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Sha'ira do. But then others, they negate through tahrif, you know, by changing and distorting the meaning. And one of the ways in which they do, and like the, the Jahmi as well, they also say that the Qur'an they say that the Qur'an, it's not the speech of Allah. Or they say that uh, kalam, or speech, is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine sifat, his characteristics. Well, but rather, it is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created from amongst his creation. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it out of nothingness. And without a place... Uh, and those are just some of the arguments of the uh, Jehemia and the Mu'tazila, as, sim as simply as we can make it. And the Ashaira, Ayyullah Habbati Fillah, they say, Kalam Allah ma'na qa'im bi nafsihi, la yata'allak bi mashiyati, wa hadahi haruf wa aswat al masmu'a makhluka lil ta'bir. عن معنى القائم بنفس نفس الله ون ون نعم. so I have a quote of Shaida. The Shaida they say that the Quran is the uh, speech of Allah. Uh, it is the the or they say the Quran is the speech of Allah. But what they mean by that كلام الله معنى قائم بنفس. They believe that the speech of Allah in and of itself. Uh, it stands alone, okay? That it, <clears throat> because they, they don't want to say that it, it, came, it came from a place or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, spoke it or what have you. So they say that in and of itself, it exists. And it has nothing to do with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the haruf, the letters, and the aswat, the sound that we hear when we hear someone reading the Qur'an is created. This is what they say. And that it is an expression of the meaning of the speech of Allah. And they also say that Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, or Muhammad, some of them say, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, 
يُعَبِّرْ عَنْ كَلَامْ فَهُوَ لِتَشْرِيفِ Also like, like we said before, تشريف. So they say the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for tashrif. It's not one of his sifat. And rather, it stands alone and that really the Qur'an that we have is actually an expression of the meaning of what Allah the Almighty uh, has said. You know, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the ta'bir or the expression was from Jibreel or Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Ahlul Sunnah says, La, no. The Quran is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was revealed to the angel Jibreel and to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and revealed directly to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. And that it is not ta'bir of them, but this is the actual speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah said. It's not like reported speech, so to speak. And this is in essence what the Asha'ira are, are, uh, believe, those from the Asha'ira that believe that. And there's other, the Asha'ira obviously is a big sect and comprised of various uh, paths, you know, you and, and you, you have some that have Aqidah, that differs from others. So some, they have a total, maybe they negate it totally, and some they make this ta'wil regarding the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ways in which Ahl sunnah refutes that is for one, this goes against the adilla of the Qur'an and the sunnah. Because the... Uh, 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 the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is heard. We hear it. And that which is heard can only be heard with a sound. Instead of being in and of itself existing. Okay, this is one of the arguments uh, as far as with the in regarding the intellect. An another way we refute this is, is that it goes against those statements that they make, the Asha'ira and the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila, and other than them from Ahl Kalam, it goes against the ijma of the Salaf, of the, um, the consensus of the Salaf of this Ummah. Thirdly, it goes against uh, The, the, uh, against the nasus as we mentioned from the Quran itself in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam and that's just very brief and we'll leave it at that and the ulama have written extensively and for more details regarding this issue go to what's absolutely imperative go to Bin Uthaymin's uh, explanation in Aqidah Tawasatiya as it is in, in English. I don't know how clearly it's been translated, but fantastic uh, book, especially in the Arabic text. One of the best uh, explanations of Aqidah the Wasatiya. And it, in Arabic, it is in, it's contained in two to three volumes, and it is fantastic. And really, Ben Uthaymin, Al-Nama, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, went into depth in refuting and di and 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 uh, dealing with those innovative creeds and arguments that they produce and their adilla. And may Allah bless us with tawfiq and ikhlas with the battle of sunnah. And bless our ulama. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Also, some of the adilla that the Asha'ira say with regards to the kalam of Allah, they use, uh, or, or the Mu'tazila, they use the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah khaliqa kulli shay. And, then, and so then they say, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah created everything in Surah Al-Zumar, verse 63, or 62. And their logic, they use this as evidence. They say, well, Quran shay, for you kun makhluk. So they say that the Quran is something so therefore, it is created. This is the logic of the Mu'tazila and those who follow them. 
And one of the ways that Ahl Sunnah responds to this is that Al Murad, what is meant by Allah creating everything, is that if this is restricted or this is pertinent only to everything makhluk, everything that is created. And everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created. Fuwa makhluk. And that includes the actions of human beings. However, what is not included that in that ayat, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خَلَقَ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ that He created everything, وَلَمْ يُدْخُلْ فِيهِ الْخَالِقْ وَصِفَاتِهِ What is not contained in that ayat, that ayat does not refer to Allah creating Himself, the Creator, nor His attributes, showing us that the istidlal, or the evidence of the uh, the way in, the, in which the Ma'tazila try to use that ayat is batil. It is a false understanding. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghayna makhluk. He was not created, he's the creator. And likewise his sifat, his characteristics are not created. And there are, as I mentioned, some of those fantastic arguments you'll find from uh, the scholars especially Ibn Uthaymeen and, and also Imam uh, Fozan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, has some very nice, a little more concise speech regarding this as well. And here's something that uh, Imam uh, Fozan said, <coughs> Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, regarding, he says, uh, regarding this uh, pertinent to the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he said, نُؤْمِنُوا أن القرآن كلام الله لأن هذا هو الذي جاء به رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنزل الله عليه القرآن. We believe that the Quran is the speech of Allah because that is what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم came with and Allah revealed that revealed the Quran to him. وهذا القرآن ليس من كلام محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Very important. This is the reputation of the أشاعرة. ولا من كلام جبريل. Very important. The Quran, he said, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, is not from the speech of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor from the speech of Jibreel. Innama huwa kalam Allah Azza wa Jal. Verily it is the speech of Allah the Almighty, to kalam Allahu bi. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala spoke with it. This is his, wa talaqahu Jibreel, min Allah. And Jibreel received this from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Wa talaqahu Nabiyu. Alayhi salatu wassalam min Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam received this from Jibreel. Alayhi salatu wassalam. Wa talakkat hu al-umma min al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the umma received this from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But it was the, it's the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was just revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he received it from Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, and we receive it from Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his Sahaba radiyallahu taalaanu majmaheen. This is how the Ummah received and knows the Quran, but it is the divine speech of Allah. Then he says, "Habib Allah taala, fuu kalam Allah." It's the speech of Allah. Min hu bida subhanahu lam yaqfu Jibreel min loh al mahfuz. Imam Fozan said, It is the speech of Allah, and it began from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it was not taken, or Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam did not take it from Allah al Mahfuz, like the people of misguidance claim. It's not from the speech of Jibreel, and it's not from the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, verily it is from the speech of of Allah, the, the, the Lord of, uh, of, all, of all, of all things. Why am I Jibreel wa Muhammad alayhim salatu wa salam? Fahuma muballagan an Allah azza wa jal fa kalam innama yaqul wa yadaf liman qalahu mubtadi'an 
la min qalahu muballighan wa muaddiyan that is probably suffice there's much more i want to speak uh but this is very beautiful and concise and this this is sufficient for us imam fozan said it is not from the speech of jibril and it's not the speech of nor the speech of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam verily it is the speech of the rabbil alamin and as for jibril and muhammad alayhim salatu wasalam then they were the ones who propagated the message from Allah, the Almighty. Therefore, the speech is spoken and attributed to the one it began from. Very important, beautiful uh, argumentation, uh, Imam Fozan in, in refuting Ahl Bidah. Not from the one who articulated it in propagating it and through practice or uh, articulating that and, and, and propagating it to the people. Letting us know the Quran it began with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one of his sifat, tabarak wa ta'ala, kalam, sifat, uh, from sif, sifat to kalam. And that there is nothing added to it, there's nothing taken from it as the Shia claim and as many other groups and heretical sects claim. But rather it's the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it began with the law and it is his perfect speech. And I'll end with this last statement of Imam Fuzan. He said, فَمَنْ قَالَ أَنَّ جِبْرِيلُ أَخَذَهُ مِنْ لَوَى الْمَحْفُوظِ أو أن الله خلقه في شيء وأخذ جبريل من ذلك شيء فهو كافر بالله عز وجل كفرا مخرجا من الملة. Imam Fuzan said that whoever says that Jibril took the Quran from Allah Allah Al Mahfuz or that Allah created it from something and Jibril took from it some took something from it then he is a disbeliever in Allah, the Almighty, and this is the disbelief that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Similar to the way the Jahmi and the Mu'tazila said, and whoever follows them in their methodology, in their understanding. But rather, it is the speech of Allah. It's its letters and in, in its meaning. And Allah spoke with it in a manner, and however... He willed, and we describe Allah by the fact that He speaks, and He spoke, and speech is from His characteristics, fi'liya, min sifat, min sifati al-fi'liya. These are the sifat, the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pertinent to actions. And how Allah speaks, we just say, Allah knows best. And this is relevant to all the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هَذِهِ كَسَائِرَ سِفَاتِهِ نُؤْمِن بِهَا وَلَا نَعْلَمْ كَيْفِيَتَهَا فَالْمَعْنَى مَعْرُوفِ وَمَا الْكَيْفِيَ فَهِيَ مَجْهُولَ لَنَا This is imperative, this is a qaida. Zakaida and Aqida. This is a creed, a principle and creed. That we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat, all of his divine attributes, the way they were revealed. We don't know how they are, but we believe in their meaning. Their, their meaning is well known. Uh, kalam is well known. It's known in the Arabic language and speech. We know it in English what it means. We believe in the, in the meaning that Allah spoke. And he speaks in a manner that suits his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't know how. The kafia, we don't know. As for the kafia, as for the how, then that is unknown to us. And we don't have to research into that. That's a qaid of Ahl Sunnah right there. Imam bin Fuzan laid that out. And you'll find that all throughout the books of the Salaf. I said that it was the last comment, but I have to end with this because this is relevant to some of the bid'ah that some of our brothers fell into in this time and age 
who have spoken about the Mus'haf. Qala uh, Shaykh Ibn Mani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Qur'an, and this is in his explanation of Aqidat al-Tahawiyyah, he said, Al-Qur'an al-Azim, Kalam Allah, lafdhuhu wa ma'anihi, fala yaqal al-laf dun al-ma'ni, duni ma'ni, kama huwa qul ahla ittizal. So he said the Qur'an, the most honorable or the, the majestic Qur'an is the speech of Allah in its pronouncement and in its meaning. And we don't say that the pronouncement with the exception of the meaning, like the way the people of I'tizal, meaning the Mu'tazila. Uh, وَلَا مَعْنَا دُونِ اللَّفْ كَمَا هُوَ قَوْلْ nor do we say it is the meaning without the pronouncement like the people of misguidance, the Kulabiyah. And this is also what Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, uh, the, who the Ash'ari of this day and age take from at a particular time before he repented and came back to the Aqid of Ahl Sunnah, they take from him at a certain period in his life when he had the belief of the Kulabiyah. And the Kulabiya, Ayyul Habiti Fillah, they believed that uh, that the love, the pronunciation, was the speech of Allah, but the meaning was not. Wala ma'na doing the love. So they had it twisted from the Mu'tazila. But all of them were Ahl al So they tried to flee from the bid'ah of the Mu'tazila, and they fell into another bid'ah by fleeing from that, from one bid'ah to the next. وَمَنْ تَابَعْهُمْ عَلَى بَاطِلِهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلَ كَلَامِ الْبَاطِلِ الْمَذْمُونِ And then he said, and whoever also follows them in their falsehood from the people of uh, kalam, like the people of philosophy, the people of who, who make uh, preference of their intellect over the, uh, the text of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And in their understanding of the Qur'an and Sunnah, they use their intellect instead of the Fahim of the Salaf of this Ummah. That they're, they're upon battle and this is Madhmoon. That this is false and they are sinful. This is sinful. And then he says, فَأَهْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ يَقُولُونَ وَيَعْتَقِدُونَ أَنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ مُنَّزِلٍ غَيْرَ مَخْرُوكِ And he said, Ahlul Sunnah, they believe and they say uh, that the Qur'an is the speech of Allah and it munazilin, it descended or, you know, it was revealed and descended, and it was not created. Al-Fadhu wa ma'nihi Ayna kalam Allah Sami'ahu Jibreel Min Allah wa Nabi Sami'ahu min Jibreel So he said that it is uh, what was uh, revealed and it is not created. It's, pronounce, it's pronouncement nor its uh, meaning was created. It, you know, it is the, all of it is the kalam of Allah, it's the speech of Allah. And Jibreel heard it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu heard it from Jibreel. وَصَحَابَةُ سَمِعُهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ And the Sahaba, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعْنِ مَجْمَعِينَ They heard it from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فُهُوَ الْمَكْتُوبِ بِالْمُصَاحِفِ Al-Mahfuz fi sudur al matlu bi al sina This is imperative, this last ibarah the Shaykh said, Rahmatullah alayhi. He said, and it is written in the Mus'haf. Meaning that's the Qur'an in the Mus'haf. So this is a refutation of our brothers who fell into bid'ah. Yes, they fell into bid'ah by speaking about the Qur'an without knowledge, saying the Mus'haf is not the Qur'an or whatever the, the other statements they say. For huwa maktub bil Mus'ahif. It is written in the Musahib. It's the kalam of Allah. It's the speech of Allah. Al-Mahfuz fi sudur. And it is protected in the chest, in the heart. Meaning people have memorized the Quran. They've been memorizing the Quran for a thousand, fourteen hundred years. And matlu bi al sinah And it is read on the tongues. When you hear someone reading the Quran, yes, it's the Quran. It's the speech of Allah that you hear. Their sound they as a person are created, yes. 
But what they are reciting is the kalam of Allah, and it has to be respected. This is why you see the Muslims, they respect the Qur'an and the Mus'haf. No one says, oh, you can put your foot on that book, because it's not really the speech of Allah. It's not the Qur'an. The Qur'an is Allah, al-Mahfuz only. La! The Qur'an is with us here, in this dunya. That's why we have those ahkam with the Qur'an. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, don't travel into the disbelieving lands with the Qur'an out of fear that the Qur'an would be harmed or destroyed or burned or as we see in America with what's-his-face, uh, the preacher who's burning the musahif or burning the, the translations. Ala kulli hal, the shahid is that the Qur'an is a speech of Allah, it's uncreated, and the musahif that we have, this is the Qur'an. And it should be protected and preserved and may Allah guide us and guide our brothers and sisters and protect us from speaking without knowledge and protect our brothers and sisters from speaking about knowledge, especially about amur of aqidah, issues of creed. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.